Uh, I, that's what we here at Soaring Profits are all about. We want to tell people stories. And, you know, Mike, I've heard your name for a long time, really since we started doing podcasts. Some of our guests have come on here and talked up Mike and the, the hounds in a big way. And it's a pleasure to have you here. And when you get the backstory about why, why you're here, what you're doing now, it makes it that much more impressive of what you're building. Maybe you could talk a little bit about what you're doing now with your group, the Hounds of Business, and how that's came from obviously your backstory. Yeah, I mean, if you want me to get into that, well, that was the fun story. So, what? So I, I ended up going to the nonprofit sector, and this was back in the, about 2015. And everybody told me I wasn't going to leave that dead end job. Right? You can't do it. You're. Alive. I've been there 17 years. I mean, I was a fireman and, and other things, but. I was too scared to go out, but I hated it. Deep down, I was never meant to work a job, right? So I applied <laughs> to a nonprofit in 2015. Oh, if I got a, a job today, I get fired today, man. It's, it's not good. Um, so it's either build it or go homeless. But I, I found um, 2015, I applied to a nonprofit and I got the job with no experience. And the funny part is, is that I know why I got that job because the board of directors looked at me and said, why should we hire you? I said, well, now I know that you have an untapped market in this, this sector you're either going to hire me and I'm going to take, you know, get this money raised for your organization, or I'm going to go get hired somewhere else. And I'm coming here first and taking it then, you know, and they went, Oh, we believe this crazy, you know, guy. Right. Uh, so, and I was 14 out of 14 on that list. Right. So I wasn't yeah. supposed to be interviewed, uh, but Hey, it, crazy things happen. So uh, I, I loved it to death, man. I, I grew up, like I said, poor. And, and, you know, so I was helping people just like me, children and families. And I got fired because of nepotism back in 2018, right before my daughter was born. Hmm. So my, my baby was born uh, right before Christmas. I got fired. You know, I had to tell my pregnant wife four days to do that. I, I lost my job. It took me hours to go in that house and say it. But when I told her about it, she said, thank God that's over. That's how bad it, <laughs> the experience was. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was bad. So then I found myself, you know, unemployed with a baby in the NICU. Um, and guess who entered the fray again? That man named Rick, the one that helped me back in the day. And he says, Hey, you know what? He says, you know, people, you know, marketing, you know, you share my heart for people. He says, why don't you help my business grow? I said, well, it's not like I'm doing anything right now. I'm unemployed, right? <laughs> of course I'm interested, mm -hmm. I, but I did. I had six figure jobs lined up. I was flying to Michigan and different places for major food banks. Uh, but it just wasn't in the cards. So fast forward when COVID hit. Right. So here I am getting excited because if I'm doing it for him, I could do it for me. You know, I, right. hey, I can do this. And so COVID hit and anybody around my age, around late 30s at the time or 40, we, we, we couldn't go out and play anymore. Right. So we did the next best thing, which was go on social media, pitch slap with a P and spam people. And I had a, a peer of mine, a, a guy that worked the same business. He was good at it. Oh, he could he could send direct messages and kill it all day long. Me, I just lost more hairline. That's all happened to me for two years. So here's how the whole hounds got started, man. I met a guy, big crazy cage fighter named Mike O. And just like Wizard of Oz, he came out of nowhere. He was a big guy. He trained a lot of folks on LinkedIn. This was about a year and a half ago. And like he pulled the curtain back and he started talking about all the things deep down I thought I wanted to do, just didn't know it was possible, right? Attracting people and, and getting people to know you so they can like you and trust you and all these disorganic things and how to do it specifically on LinkedIn. So I changed gears. And uh, in last March, he said, your profile sucks and you're wearing a suit. Why? And I'm like, man, that's what guys in my industry do. You're, you're in finance, right? You wear a suit, talk weird. And that's what we do. He says, is it working for you? Oh, hell no. He's not doing it. He says, well, why don't you let yourself out? He said, you're a working class pink neck, you know, kind of guy. He said, just let it rock. Let it. I said, well, it won't work. He says, well, it ain't working now. He said, what do you got to lose? Nothing. <laughs> No, so yeah. there it was man i threw the hat on i had i gotta find this i gotta make you museum or something I, so i had two guys uh two rednecks with straw hats and overalls just talking and in pink it said redneck financial coach that was the all the branding i had at the time that's all i needed because at that point dude people who wasted my time or thought they were better than me and all that stuff they they ignored me and then i had people like HR directors talking about, I had a 79 Chevy. I'm a redneck too. You know, nobody knows. It was so much fun. Right. Yeah. And so I met people and I, I figured guys, if I can grow with my restrictions in finance, if I can grow with this face and hat, imagine what can happen if I can show other people, right. Who don't have my restrictions, who don't have my stigma or face and hat. 
I, and I said, you know what? Instead of talking about money, guess what? I talked to him about growing on LinkedIn. I, I became a dating coach, right? Informal. <laughs> I became a business coach. I mean, anything I could do for these people. And last remark, here's what I told them all. And this is how the hounds exploded. I had no idea this was going to happen. I said, listen, I'm trying to catch Joe Rogan and Oprah before they're Joe Rogan and Oprah. Everybody in my industry, Patrick, they're all going after the big fish because they pay. But see, I was meeting people that made $2,000 a month starting off. But I yeah. knew, man, I knew they were going to make a killing, man. I knew. I, I, and I wanted to be a part of it. So I told him, I said, listen, if I can help you make money and, and push you along and, and we can become really close, right? Like real relationship and we could do this. Uh, guess what? Who's going to come after you whenever when you make good money? Because you're going to make 12 grand. You know, I, they're like, oh, no. I said, yes, you will. And they said, well, everybody's going to come after me. Yeah. And you're going to tell them, no, thank you, because the redneck was here when I was broke. And they said, right. OK. And I said, hey, I'm holding you to it. So, yes. guys, that's what I did. I started sticking them in a little group so I can keep up with them. And guess what? Things happened in their life. The market changed, et cetera, et cetera. They were kicking my butt. I mean, look at Raquel, man. I mean, here you go. Casey, I'm like the fat gymnastics coach, dude. Like, <laughs> I ain't flipping, but she sure as hell want to go metal. Yeah. So that just snowballed. And all I did was love on people. And, and wow. And, and guess what? Good people reciprocate. And that's yeah. what happened. So there was a point where I was not as useful to them, but they right. didn't forget it. And now you see it all day long where that's where people say, because I gave them value first. I believed and pushed them up first. And now I need them way more than they needed my ass. And look what's happening. So I